What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you the Week 8 War Recap, CWL Invite, Fortune Steel versus Reddit Omega, and what an amazing, incredible war this was, and despite the five-star loss uh, that we suffered over on the Fortune Steel side, it was an incredible war, some amazing attacks to show you guys, uh, so stay tuned uh, for that. I'll go ahead and break down both sides of the map, uh, let you guys know the stats, and then we'll get into the replays. But I do want to give a huge shout out to everybody over at Red Omega. I'm telling you guys, they are not uh, now 7-1 for no reason. These guys put up, not, I'm, they put up a complete show, they did a tremendous job. I mean, literally on every single town hall level, every single category, uh, definitely one of the best clans in the world. Uh, huge shout out to Red Omega. They completely brought it, and we still were able to put up 110 stars, and this was a heavier breakdown as far as the town hall 11s go. It was a 6, 16, 18 breakdown, of course, a 40 v 40. But we'll go ahead and show you guys what they did to our side of the map. I'll show you what we did to their side of the map and get into the attacks. Okay, real quick, uh, their stats. Starting with uh, their 10 v 11 game, they cleared five. Uh, they went five for 14 on the 10 v 11 game. So did very, very well. Definitely above the league average. And right here, like I said, there were six Town Hall 11s. Guys, they even had an 11 v 11 triple this war. Uh, like I said, they performed on every single Town Hall level. They had a total of three attempts. Uh, this one they were able to execute on our number six. As far as their dip game, they went 10 for 10, 100%, guys. Uh, they did not have a single dip fail using all different types of strategies, uh, but did not have a single dip fail. And they also had six 10v10s against us as well. Uh, it's really, really hard <laughs> uh, to be... I mean, Red Omega pretty much putting up these stats. They, they would have beat any clan uh, in invite this weekend, getting 11v11 triple and clearing all of the Town Hall 10s on the map. Absolutely huge. And their Town Hall 9s did very well as well. Uh, they hit at 62%, so well above uh, 50%, hitting at 62%. And they had quite a few scouts as well, of course, clearing all the 9s, not needing any dips. Okay, Forge from Steel. Uh, this is what we did to their side of the map, where we fell flat, what I was talking about in the beginning, beginning of the video. We went 3 for 19 on the 10v11 game. RO had some incredible Town Hall 11 builds. Big shout out to their uh, their 11 guys for building these really, really tough bases we were not able to quite figure out. Uh, so we were only able to clear 50% of their 11s, only three of them, leaving three up on the board, which ate into our Town Hall 11 attacks going for the 11v11 triples. Not getting one, but we were still able, still able to secure the two star on a couple of the bases, leaving their number three only one star. Uh, as far as uh, the Town Hall 10s go, we did very, very well on the 10v10 game. We had five 10v10s ourselves. I will be showing you guys each one of these attacks. Uh, I'll probably times four towards the end just so we can get through all of them. Don't want the video uh, to get too long. Uh, but yeah, so we had, we, Fortune Steel had five 10v10s, guys. Absolutely huge. We've been doing very well executing 10v10 triples throughout all eight weeks, uh, through invite. So huge shout out to all of our 10v10 guys. I also had one this war. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I'll show you guys that replay. Uh, and as far as our dips, we still did very well on our dips. We went nine for nine. So there were no Town Hall 11 dip fails on any of these Town Hall 10 bases. Uh, so very, very good job to our Town Hall 11 squad, dipping down, getting these uh, these 10s cleared, going 100%. And as far as our 9v9 game, uh, we did hit at 60%. I think we had five, maybe six scouts, uh, which were very crucial uh, in getting some of these 10v10, or getting some of these 10v10s off and getting the triple. So huge shout out to our Town Hall 9s. Start off a little shaky in the beginning, but our night crew came in and just mopped the floor, uh, doing very, very well. 
So again, huge shout out to our Town Hall 9s. I will show you guys quite a few replays here. Uh, again, this was an amazing war. Uh, I do want to give a huge shout out uh, to Wen. I want to give Wen a huge shout out as we watch Rago's uh, CB Mass Hog uh, on this attack right here. This will be the, our Town Hall 9 I'll be showing you guys. But huge shout out to Wen. This guy had to have been on voice. 20 out of the 24 hours this war was going on. Uh, the only time he wasn't on voice was when he was in bed. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to him. Uh, you know, I mean, all of our leaders, all of our war generals, you know, all the troops, all of our members, everybody did come together for this war. We knew it was going to be tough. Right at Omega, 6-1, and one, uh, stepping in uh, to week 8, going against us. We knew it was going to be hard. Uh, but huge shout out to Wen for all the time that he put uh, in coordinating this war. Uh, really, really did an amazing job. I also want to give a huge shout out uh, to Ash, uh, one of our top uh, base builders, uh, getting these bases out. Uh, it's definitely a hard, hard task and, you know, huge shout out to him as well. But Reddit Omega, again, guys, just completely brought it. Um, but anyway, I def definitely want to get those kudos out. You know, we got to give credit where credit is due, uh, especially for these guys always coming through war after war after war. Okay, so looking at Rago's hit, nice and simple. I always like simple plans, especially something like this, doing a CB starting over at nine, just singing his heroes, no bowlers, no funny business, bring in uh, just a jump, uh, just using his maxed heroes to clear a nice path for his hogs, bring in three heals for them, uh, starting off over at about 130 with the deployment, uh, and they're just going to be wa working their way clockwise around the base, still has a heal, and look at this nice heal spell placement, uh, covering the expo, the Tesla, the archer tower, the wizard tower, and the other archer tower your tower uh, which will be one of the last point defenses to go down but a very very nice hit uh, by Rago uh, like I said I'm gonna have to times four some of these because I want to get through all these attacks especially uh, these 10 v 10s even has a pup left up not gonna do a whole lot to all these hogs uh, he brought 36 of them in total very very nice hit right there uh, from Rago very very nice done he also six packed this war as well and that was a fresh hit uh, so definitely want to get that out to you guys. God, I love our Town Hall 9s. Okay, here we have Raj coming in on number 22. This is the lowest Town Hall 10 uh, on the map. This being a tier 2 Town Hall 10. Uh, Going to be doing a Sui Hero Lalo. Also bringing a freeze for the back end. Very, very good execution. This base did absorb a couple of attacks. Uh, but Raj was able to come in here and clean it up very, very nicely. So as you see right there, uh, King just funneled all that trash to make sure the queen goes in. He's going to get incredible value uh, just from this queen. Notice he does still have ability where he's going to pick up that archer tower and pick up another air defense. So not only did he carve a nice path for his uh, Lalo. Uh, when that gets off, uh, but also took out two air defenses as well. So very, very good value. Just a golem and a loon coming out of the enemy CC. Not going to do a whole lot uh, against 31 balloons. So uh, he's about to start his Lolo portion down here at 6 o'clock, starting with both camp pounds as they make their way towards that air defense. While everything's distracted, just has two huge wads of loons all clumped up right here. Uh, he's going to be dropping down a haste down at 6. Has another haste uh, with another huge group coming in here over at 3 o'clock. They're going to make their way uh, to that air defense. We have three. Now all four air defenses are down, raging in the core, where he also has a scaly spell to grab that queen and notice he has a nice freeze also catching the expo up there towards the north side of the base followed up by a heal spell uh, as he is taking on quite a few point defenses and that wizard uh that splash damage from that wizard tower he has a lot of spells notice he still has four loons left uh, to deploy. He's pretty much going to be using those for cleanup, but just an amazing uh, classic Sui Hero Lalo, uh, just trickling uh, those four camp loons just to help with cleanup. Uh, do not want to get a time fail. Huge shout out uh, to Raj. He has been absolutely solid uh, since we picked him up. Amazing, amazing attack and a very, very solid war uh, from him. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and check out number 21. We have Hikari. Not only do we have uh, Hikari, 
uh, Hikari six packing. So we will show you guys both of these attacks and both of them coming on uh, very similar base layouts. I had to get a drink of coffee. Okay. Uh, just going to be starting uh, a queen walk. Not even doing a queen charge. Just a solid uh, queen walk. Notice uh, the range of these Inferno Towers. Not even going to be needing a spell uh, for this queen walk right here. Uh, you'll notice he's working his way up to the top of the base right here. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, and his king is still going, just trimming all this trash, even going to be getting this Tesla down as well. And he is doing this with miners, queen walk miners. Oh, so right here, again, hasn't even needed to use a spell on this walk right here. Uh, this was actually, we're just going from bottom up, but this was actually his second hit. Uh, so doing this attack, he already uh, tripled on the first one. But again, stay tuned. I will show you guys his second hit as well. Uh, notice he dropped one hog on that lone wizard tower towards the bottom uh, of that compartment pulling the CC, uh, does have a nice uh, poison to go ahead and grab that loon, and even takes out a skelly trap, which is absolutely huge, especially for something like miners. Miners will take out one skelly at a time, drop down, and pop back up. So, I mean, miners can get tied up on something like ground skellies for a very, very long time. So, I mean, that was absolutely huge right there, uh, even being one skelly trap. Okay, so here comes the miners coming in from the upper left-hand side. Going to be going uh, counterclockwise around the base. Does have three heals for him. Uh, he went ahead and already dropped two. Uh, also had a rage in the core. Again, he didn't need a rage for his queen. Uh, so got rid of the king and some of those... Uh, high HP buildings that were inside the core, goes ahead and drops down his third and final heal as uh, those miners are trying to beat on that wizard tower down there at six o'clock. And again, queen's still up, just taking out all these point defenses, taking out the splash from the mortar as well. And his miners still have miners at this point. We'll go ahead and times this. And you can see he just has so many miners left up. They go ahead and pretty much one shot that Inferno Tower, ending at the Wizard Tower up there where he did the original Hog Lure. Uh, but very, very nicely done uh, from Hikari. Again, he's six pack. I will show you guys that. This was my hit on their number 20. This is actually the first 10v10 of the war. And not only that, uh, I got this 10v10 fresh, did not have it scouted. Uh, we figured with the few scouts that we had, we wanted to put those on bases uh, where we didn't necessarily, uh, where we needed, or excuse me, where we needed to know what was in the clan castle. Something like a dragon attack, you don't necessarily need to know what's in the CC. So we decided uh, to make the move and did the decision to hit this fresh definitely paid off baby dragon starting over on the town hall at three o'clock getting that mortar as well just trying to set a funnel for the dragon so they go into the core of the base like i always say uh heroes over there at 12 o'clock just use a wizard to funnel that first uh elixir storage and I'm going to get amazing value uh, from King and Queen on this. Uh, Queen already took out an Archer Tower. She's also going to get the Wizard Tower. Mo uh, most importantly, uh, not only setting the funnel, but she's even going to get an air defense, guys. That's that's how uh, well this attack went off. I had no idea that she was going to get that far, but ended up getting that uh, air defense way over there at nine o'clock. Huge, huge value. Uh, we have seven dragons coming in, starting off, uh, also drop a uh, total of four loons to help target those archer towers. Rage coming in, a nice rage in the core. Uh, with the two air defenses left up at six, we go ahead and we're going to be doing the clone Lalo uh, with a haste and a rage down here at six o'clock. There goes all those max level seven loons all under clone hasting up. Nice rage to take out both the air defenses and in hopes to get that Tesla as well. So all dragons down at this point. We still have a camp hound coming in over at nine o'clock followed up by four camp loons hasting them in. They're gonna go ahead and take out the 80. The clone loons still doing work guys. Uh, and right here, this is when we start to get a little worried. As you see, all dragons are down. But if you notice, we have uh, a huge group of loons on each side of the base. Uh, that one loon did take a seeking air mine. A hound got the other one. But that hound popping actually did us a favor uh, right here by having...
those pups helping not only with the cleanup in the core, but also helping uh, take out the wizard tower and the expo as well, ending with about three balloons. Uh, we also had some minions that we dropped down over here towards the bottom of the base to get rid of this trash. And that was uh, Clone Bone, as you guys saw it right there. Absolutely huge, that was the first 10v10 of the war. So we actually started off at 100% uh, 10v10 hit rate, uh, but I was very, very excited uh, to get a 10v10 uh, here in CWL, CWL Invite. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that clone bone. All right, here we have Manav going in here, uh, doing it with bitch, uh, using quite a few different attacks. And as you guys are going to see, this replay is going to end in one minute and 30 seconds. Just completely uh, wrecks this base. Bitch is still uh, very, very strong on the right base routes. And when you have someone doing it that knows what they're doing it or knows how to do it. Uh, starting off with three witches on each flank followed by a few bowlers gonna go ahead and drop one jump uh, And notice you're gonna see this crazy jump spell placement reason being is there is a double giant bomb set right there by that inferno tower uh, Which we do not want the bowlers to go into so notice he drops that other jump only leading his troops r Directly into the core uh, the first time we did this attack the jump connected that inferno tower compartment Which completely end up wrecking the bowlers notice. He still has all them up in the core guys uh, goes and pops king ability uh, and still has queen ability as well. Look at how nice and healthy uh, these flanks are right here. Uh, so just did a tremendous job on this attack. Uh, very, very good execution. And uh, that tricky jump spell placement not opening up uh, that inferno tower compartment uh to keep making sure his bowlers in the core stay alive a uh, huge huge attack right there uh from manav huge shout out and again welcome aboard he is one of uh, our newer members here i definitely want to welcome him and good good attack on the, uh doing that bitch taking out uh their number 19 okay here's hikari's uh second 10v10 like i told you guys the base was modified but it's very very similar as far as uh where the ad's are the core is very similar even the inferno tower placement uh so their base builder whoever uh, designed uh, this base, uh, just tweaked it for the other one, but it's a very, very similar attack. Uh, the only thing uh, that was changed was, no, the spells are actually exactly the same, uh, but very, very similar. Look at the kings doing the exact same thing. Uh, we have the queen walking, uh, same direction, starting over at about 10 o'clock, about, uh, yeah, 1045, working her way up, going around the base. And like I said, this was the first attack when we noticed the other base was a very, very similar layout. We said, why not try the exact same attack and end up uh, working out in our favor. This one was even went a lot smoother as the queen was able to take out that wizard tower. Uh, which just helps uh, the miners path through this base uh, even better. Queen uh, King did absolute work taking out all the trash from nine o'clock down to six. Absolutely huge. Uh, so again, Queen just working right here. Uh, same thing, drops one hog to pull the, the enemy CC and it's the same CC, uh, that being a Golem Loon and gets a Ground Skelly as well. So the Queen's just gonna be working through that Golem. Uh, loon will fall to the poison as well. Here comes the miner. Miners, goes ahead and drops the CC miners to take out that inferno tower as they do have a few more hit points of uh, you know a lot more damage output and they did absorb one giant bomb as well so here comes all the other miners again going counterclockwise around the base has a nice rage and heal right there in the core as that's where all the Teslas are so slightly different uh, from the other base uh, and goes ahead and drops down his third and final heal for those miners, making sure that he catches that bomb tower and uh, the cannon and the expo inside that heal. So very, very good uh, value from that heal spell here from Hikari. And again, queen still up as well. Uh, the last building to go down is actually going to be the clan castle and there it goes so that was hikari's 10v10 uh six pack here in week eight a uh, huge huge shout out uh, to him uh definitely uh he has been doing very very well here in ffs all right this is going to be our last replay going to show you guys uh, one of our uh, 10 v 11 hits uh, this one coming from Gooves, uh using turbo here 
Uh, going to be doing it with a queen charge, or excuse me, a queen walk, um, bowler smash. We'll go ahead and see how he breaks this down. He ends this attack with 69%. Uh, this actually gave us a lot of motivation coming in because this was one of our first uh, 10 v 11 hits of the war. A again, with the stats, how they were uh, going three for 19. Obviously, it didn't work out that way. Uh, but definitely gave us good momentum uh, starting off the war, getting this attack in nice and early, getting good value from that queen right there. Uh, not Again, not only funneling for the bowler smash, but also getting percentage as well. Gollum down there at 6 o'clock, and he goes ahead and drops all his bowlers, including his CC bowlers as well. Uh, Wizards down there just beating on that wall. Uh, looks like indefinitely. Uh, goes ahead and drops down all his spells right here. A Rage also had a nice freeze and double poisoned uh, the that squishy CC that came out. There was a baby dragon. King takes the jump. And the queen right there in the core. Notice he's already at 43%. Look at all these bowlers that he still has up. No doubt is this going to be a two-star. Now it's just a matter of how much percent are we going to get. And he still has a baby dragon as well as a few minions uh, still to deploy as well. So as you can see, bowlers still doing work. Queen is still up as well. She just falls right there. Baby Dragon uh, taking out that camp. Going to be taking out that mortar as well. And uh, the Dark Barracks working on the lab now. And that is going to do it. 69%. Uh, a very, very good percent. Uh, but huge shout out uh, to Goose getting that attack off. Uh, again, that was one of the three 11s that we were able to clear with our Town Hall 10s. Uh, but very, very, I mean, very, very tough war. Formidable, formidable opponent. That being RO. And, I mean, they absolutely brought it. I already went over the stats. Don't need to go over it again. Huge shout out to everybody in Forge from Steel. Uh, I mean, we did definitely gave it our all. And with these numbers that we put up... I mean, we would we would have beat many many clans in invite. Unfortunately, we ran into I mean just an unstoppable force uh, being Reddit Omega. Huge shout out to them again. An incredible war. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the replays uh, that I shared with you guys. If you guys uh, like the video, make sure you like it, comment, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always. This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in.